It's been a great honor to host over 100 participants from 16 nations and three continents here in Bonn, at the very heart of Europe, to present, discuss and share their research, experience and thoughts about shared parenting. The presentations encourage us across all kinds of borders. Children say, I want to be allowed to love both mom and dad. This is the most normal thing in the world. Especially in the early years, it's so important that uh, parents are actively involved in children's lives and shared parenting facilitates that. Over three days, the meeting venue was busy with workshops, plenary lectures and discussions with experts on children's needs and rights, sharing their research, ideas and visions with people from all over the world, being inspired by each other's work, networking and making new friends during our conference cruise on the River Rhine. Yes, I'm very satisfied with the conference and I think it is very rewarding to share both between professions and internationally in this way. It's very yeah, it's very rewarding. I appreciate it a lot. In Sweden, about 40% of children are living in shared parenting arrangements. A wide range of studies indicate... With many other women, we support the idea of shared parenting, because for us, this is a way, in cases of separation, to live our personal lives, to have time to develop our professional careers in the confidence we have in men and in the fathers of our children. In many countries, however, there's a gap between international empirical evidence and socio-legal practice, including the host country Germany. If parents fighting over their children are going to court, children's contact with one parent, mostly the father, is, by court order, reduced to weekend visits. With a view to existing case law, the best interests of the child are violated by decisions removing one parent from the child's life, excluding him from the life of the child and allowing the other parent to monopolize and control the child. These practices are obviously not consistent with the Constitution and international human rights. The result is a stolen childhood. Ned Holstein, president of the National Parents' Organization USA, member of the ICSP Board of Directors, predicts via video... Every year that goes by puts more children into that pipeline so that sole custody may still be manifesting its negative effects 30 or 40 years from now among millions of people who were scarred as children by the sole custody decisions of the family court. For this reason, it is imperative that researchers, practitioners and civil society all work together. Disconnection from a parent and one's extended family is a serious form of uprooting that has profoundly negative effects on child well-being. Children need both parents, as parents, not visitors, in their lives. 